In this film, we're looking at layer masks and how they can help you in multiple ways to enhance the image. So the first thing we need to grab is our layers. And if I just grab that uh, palette and I kind of bring it over to the side so we can actually see what's going on here, um, we can see that basically uh, we've got a combination of multiple layers plus some of these kind of extra little parts on the side. And these are the, what we're referring to as the masks. So if I switch everything off for a minute, the original image is basically a flotation image of an entertainer uh, laying with his back on a stool, using his red coat to disguise most of the stool, just using some of the kind of the background. And and, and you can just see what's that's going on here kind of thing. So um, what we're trying to do is actually retouch or copy out or it's just what is the best way for a, cer a certain image well I need the scale I need the size and so on so basically the way that we worked in here was first of all uh, was looking at how we retouch or we mask everything else out of the scene to to get to where we want and then we're adding in a bit of a uh, levels correction to uh, enhance it and then we're going to add in a little bit more of a kind of a, a saturation adjustment within the image to actually change uh, change it all but at the heart of it we need to get back to um, the basic image and that's what we have here so when we start to talk about masks it's basically on the layers palette it's this uh, kind of square with a donut hole in the middle so technically a square donut and um, once we kind of click onto this it adds a mask to the side so as we've got nothing below here now basically there's no nothing for it to kind of work on um, so if i was to uh, do anything here bdx brush default um, colors that's white on top black underneath and then now x to put the black on top um, basically all I'm doing is erasing it to nothing below as, as, as you can see and and what we're doing is basically we're adding um, a black to the white mask so if I invert this mask now the only thing that is showing is basically the part that I've basically uh, rub, uh, rubbed out as, as it were so as I basically um, have white on top with a black black mask it appears if I have the white now just by pressing X so if you watch over on the left hand side here of my tools palette um, I can switch the foreground background colors by just clicking on the little um, arrows default yep yeah. I can reset to pure for foreground white and background black by clicking onto the little squares here um, but I can do that in a shortcut way which is basically D for default and then X to swap these colors from black to white all the time so when I have black on top because I'm in a black mask I've basically erasing out and or making stuff appear whichever way it is and then basically if I put white on top we start to actually show what is below so we can either have a white mask um, or a black mask when it's a black mask it's referred to as an inverted mask and masks can be copied from one layer to another they can even be uh, moved from one file of an image open to another file that is open as well so what do we need to actually do to understand all this so the first thing let's just get rid of this mask to begin with and just show you how that works again so if I click on just the mask by itself it puts the white by default in the mask in place remember what I was doing I was selecting brush B for brush D for default to put um, white on top black underneath and then because this is a white mask if I paint with white on top it does no nothing if I swap to the black it hides it okay so in the same way again pressing the X to put the white back on top and I reveal once more so if I remove that mask though and basically hit the um, mask button while I press and hold the alt button it basically has an inverted mask so now if I paint with white it shows me what is below so by by working of course with just one layer here we can start to actually reveal what we want 
to reveal within the photograph without actually making any selections around the image itself. So that kind of starts to make us un understand in the basics of what a mask does. How would I use masks when I'm working with this image? So the first thing that I need to do is I'm going to make a, uh, a, a kind of an image, as it were, of just him. So if I basically create myself a new layer and I fill that with white, so because white is on the background for a minute, if I basically just press the Alt and the background layer, that converts it to black press the control key and I press the backspace, then you can see basically it's just filled, filled it with white. If I just grab that layer and I kind of push it below what is the, um, uh, the uh, background image itself, you can see now I've got a white layer, which is the background, the picture layer, which is 08. If I click now the mask tool, yep, and now I basically invert it I can B, D, X, um, I need to press X again to put the white back on touch. And then all I need to do is actually work around the image to actually bring it alive. And obviously what we're doing here is, in fact, we're not showing the background image, we're just showing the white that is around. Okay, so I can still keep um, paid, uh, painting on the mask to reveal what is the sub uh, the sub subject. And again, if I was doing this for real, probably go around and select around him quickly. But mask is really quick, as you can see here. Um, but now what I need I need to do is go in there and and almost make the selection with the mask itself. So uh, once more, what I need to do now is put black on top and that starts to eat away at the parts that I want to now hide a bit like we just did with the background. So in the same way, just selecting through the image. And We're just creating ourselves just a simple cutout, but with the mask, of course, because if I just switch the mask off, everything is still here. So I'm not making a selection or anything else. So back on again, let's come down and do the other part. Now, obviously for real, I'd have to uh, retouch in some of the cloak and things really, but with this kind of um, fine art pour, portrait cod concept basically i can get away with a little bit of bl blurring out of the um, the coattails and so on well, that gives a good idea to begin with so if i make a mistake though and let's say i've kind of retouched the little parts that i want but then all of a sudden i make a mistake and i i just remove this here all i need to do is hit the x and um, to paint it back in because remember, what we're doing is revealing with white and hiding with black in the way that the mask is set is set up here. So in the same way as that we might make a selection, this is allowing us a little bit more of a fine tune in around the image itself. So even though we've selected all this white here, if I didn't want, want it, I can basically just go in and uh, remove some of this white background around the basic cane and so on. So you get the idea of what a basic mask is doing for us in this occasion. Um, let's look at it and how we use it with adjustment layers as well. Okay, so let's switch our background on. So now we can see him. It's a little bit kind of actually there in the whites. So I'm still affecting the top image because that's the layer I have selected. If I select on an adjustment layer, and let's say we use a levels and we just brighten the white just a little bit, okay, to actually get rid of the lightness uh, of the background or something. Um, basically, what I've done now is I've affected the whole of this kind of group of layers below. Well, if I'm using an adjustment layer anyway, I've got the con 
if I press the Alt key, I can basically just make it work with the the uh, layer that is below and not affect all the others. In this case, it doesn't really matter what I'm doing. Um, however, what I can do is say, well, in fact, yeah, that's great. I want you to give us a brighter white and so on, but I don't want you to affect all the skin. And this is because we've created a mask. Every time you create a new adjustment layer, basically it instantly gives us a mask with it. So you can see, I don't have to actually click on the mask tool. It comes straight, 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 straight away. So what are we going to do? Let's just delete that um, black layer, black and white layer for a minute. And now we want to do is actually retouch the skin back in. That's the part that's going to be lost. So B for brush, D for default, puts white back on top. That's just kind of a habit that you'll get it into. X to put the black on top. In this case, all I need to do now is go in and start to bring back the tonality of the skin that was beforehand. Um, obviously, I'm just working quick, quickly here. You might need to take a little bit more time. But what we're doing is affecting all the other air areas of the image. Let's take the hardness down a touch. So we can kind of bring all this together. So all I'm painting in, as you can see, is the uh, body itself, the part that was going to be highlighted and made very, very light. We'll just tone that hat back down as well. So that's uh, a way that we can use the mask there. Let's use it in exactly the same way. And let's just do a saturation in color. So hue and saturation. Let's just say that we want to take away some of the red of the coat. Um, but we know that red and oranges are very close to the skin color. So if I click onto the master and then I click on reds, and then I adjust the sat saturation of the red, you can see it takes out some of the skin tone as well, which we don't really want it to do. Well, because I've almost retouched the skin pack back there on the mask, what I can do is basically press and hold the Alt key and drag the mask from below up to the mask above, and then I've got an option to replace it. So I press yes straight, uh, straight away, I've brought back all my skin tone on the flesh, and the only thing it's done is because I kind of painted in the sleeve as well, um, all I need to do here is paint that back out again. So I can quickly go around the part that I don't want to actually have the color brought back as it were and it's a quick way to work with kind of soft selections uh, but a mask can really really work well in so many ways and uh, remembering like with all layers um, you can kind of link um, masks together so in other words at present this is linked specifically to what this is doing, um, but it's more of a linking with the mask. If I was to move this image now, as is, so this image, if I move, I move it, basically the mask goes with it, it's just the other mask below, above it doesn't move. Um, however, if I basically just um, switch the other ones off, but I unlink this one here, you'll see we start to actually see what is being masked because that's they're not linked together anymore. When they are linked, it means I can move this image and its mask together and they won't be affected. If I want all of these to actually remain together, I can either select them all and create a, uh, a link for them. So I can actually just link them or I could put them into the group. But really, really what we've demonstrated there is the masks and how it can actually be used for good effect.